Dan Brown, you are you were married to George Brown from Cool and the Gang. And firstly, I want to check in with you um, as a fellow widow. There are good days and there are bad days. And I cannot imagine how difficult it must be to still have your husband's voice um, and to still be speaking about that voice and to be asked questions about him every single day. So I want to check in if you're okay. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay for the most part. It's, uh, you know, just like anything, it comes in waves as a friend of mine would say uh, we were just talking because she was also she is also a, a widow and he said i want to prepare you for something you never know when it's going to hit you and it's going to hit you at various moments that's something i wanted to share with you she said and uh, and it's so true you never know it's it's it got his moments of the of highs and low um you know those highs are the time when you get to hear his voice and the places that he had once visited or we once visited and that he would share and and the beauty of it. And uh, those are the good highs because of those amazing memories. And then the lows are like, why did you leave me? Why, why aren't you here? Mm. So um, those questions often do come um, to play. Mm. It's incredible how there's not a unique experience on this planet, even in widowhood, something so personal. Because I think we all ask those same things. Why did you leave me? There's no, there's never enough time, right? There's never enough of anything. That's true. That. That, that, that is so true. So he was one of the founding members of Cool and the Gang. And um, living with him and seeing this life, it must have been absolutely incredible. <laughs> but also sometimes I think I would have been so incredibly frustrated with Cool and the Gang and I just would want my husband. Did you ever have those moments where you were like, me or the band? Well, actually, no, because when I met him as a artist, I'm one of those who would say, you know, I, I tre treasure and, uh, and value um, a person's gift and creative creativity and job. I had my own job. I had my own career. So I understood what it meant to have to make a living. So I didn't compare myself or expected him to be at home to be with me. Um, it's kind of a balance, you know, when... I'm an independent person, so I, I I relish the time that he was out there to to create and made the world happy and share his gift. You know, I knew he had a gift in him, and that's what I cherish. And I wanted to enjoy that gift with him because it's so important and it's so it's such a a, a special gift that that not everyone can have. And when someone does have it, I really treasure that. And no, I never did come at ask him to that question. I never expected him to. To, to be home for me and give up anything of his side for me. What I did expect was for him to be an honest, faithful, and true person. And that was what I uh, was hoping to have. And, and, and that's what I, I received. Now, unexpectedly, we have music from him coming. Uh, what if the, the first single off of an album that we're getting? Talk to me a little bit about what I would normally ask an artist is, about the recording process. How did this come about? But you were there. So tell yes. me a little bit about this. Why did he go solo? And um, what was this album? What did it mean to him? Uh, that's um, a, a far and deep question because George has, um, you know, his, his his heart was his band besides the family. He loved Cool the Game. And that was what he relished and that's what he treasured to the very end of his life. Um, what made him go solo uh, was because of the, you know, through the years of partnership, it, it's always a tumultuous ride. You go through ha having partners and sometimes, you know, it's a lot of um, opinion, a lot of, uh, uh, of decision to be made. And as through the years, he, they, when they made those wonderful, amazing hit was he had, as he had dressed in his book is, it's an amazing high. And it was just, it was great being in the studio together where they all can put their mind together and put their bits and pieces in um, to create that amazing sound and those beautiful sonnets out there. But as do the years go, they they evolved and everyone had their own opinion and everyone had their own um, share of, of, of life and, and, and everything else and creativity and collaboration. So uh, his music wasn't well received by others. Um, you know, George knows he had, a, he knew where he was, his position was in, in the world and in, in writing. So, um, you know, it just decision making and he, he had a hard time, um, 
having his input. So one day his 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 attorney and his dear friend who is still a dear friend to this day said, "Hey George, why don't you um you uh put your own album, do your own stuff because you you have a gift there. You shouldn't put it to a side or having anyone um tell you any different." So that was over 20 years ago when those advice and suggestions was in place. And I remember him coming home and saying, hey, you know, David told me I should do my own album because I can't seem to have anyone be on the same path or believe in what I put out there. And he said, you know, rejection is hard, which he said I've been used to, but um, it's just something I think I'm a I'm tinker in. So he did, he came home and he wrote and the years he was off the road, um, he wrote amazing melodies and amazing songs, but it was that side of, uh, you know, like every artist, they have that question of, uh, of um, what do you call it, uh, validation of their work. So he wrote some songs and he would come in and say, let's do this. And I was like, wow, that's beautiful. How, how you know, it's amazing to me how he can put, uh, put together a melody and a song within uh, minutes sometime. And I said, how do you do that? And so I said, you need to put this out. This is beautiful. This is what you need to share. This is what people need to hear. So um, that's how that project became about. And that spans over a period of 20 something plus years. And in the album, there are songs that, that it's been that long that he let sit. And, um, and now and one of them is the second single. The first one was, um, you know, uh, oh my goodness. I'm sorry, the first song is um, What If? And that was written a few years ago. And that song has a deep meaning to him is because of what's going on in the world. Um, he, um, you know, it was the war in Europe and the lives that were lost. He was so hurt, you know, emotionally touched. So, and especially when he sees the children um, passing away and the vision, uh, uh, the visual of uh, Ukraine, it was just so much for him. Um, and he, he put those, those feelings into, into lyrics and melody. And that's what you have is what if. And then, um, coming up is Shadi's God. And that is that song is about me. That song is an oldest one in there. And, um, and he wrote that one, um, over to, um, I would say almost 20 years ago, um, or 20 year over 20 years ago. That came about before the children came. Um, and then the album, in the album, it, he talks, and it's very personal. I, I feel that this album is truly personal because it has, he talks about um, the world. He talks about faith and he talks about me and his family. And he talks about his grandmother, um, who was the tremendous influence in his life as he was growing up, um, who taught him about, you know, who reminded the, the deep meaning of religion. Um, and then, of course, there was a song in there about his uh, ex-girlfriend as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, but um, but he wrote it. it was beautiful, you know. It's, it's something that it, it's all the people had a meeting in his life, and that is what this album is about: is deep feeling, soul searching, and getting his feeling across, and reminding the world of 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 uh, faith and you know, hold truth to your faith. How that, incredible that we have this gift, but how incredible that you have this gift as well from him. Thank you. It is it is truly, truly incredible. Han, for anyone who is going through grief, whatever grief that is right now, and who's listening to you, do you have any words of wisdom, any advice? My advice is, you know, this, whoever, you know, your loved ones, they don't choose to when to leave or when to come into this world. Um, the, the, I would say is every ride is a journey and those you're blessed to have that journey with that special person. And is that once they leave, they left you, uh, the widow, um, something behind is to, to treasure those memories. And that person would want you to continue relish the good time. And those difficult days are, for us to learn and to weather through those challenges. And, you know, it makes us stronger to be that that person. Um, and that that was the reason why, uh, you know, God made us to be here and is to be, to, to understand and to cherish and, and share what we go through to leave the next person um, that, that would have to walk through that path. And George had 
we had cherished many memories. He gave me two beautiful, two beautiful children. And that is what I looked at. And that's what I see. And is that a little bit of him is in both of my kids and our kids. Um, and for me is to be strong. And I just, that's what exactly what he said is be strong and um, to carry on. That's beautiful, Han. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your message. And um, thank you for gifting us with, with this album and this new single, What If. I'm so excited to play it on Jacaranda FM. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Have a good day.